It has been my belief that whatever is going on out there in the world, we must continue to cherish our Jewish values. Values that help us achieve our dreams despite barriers. And when I say barriers, I mean in my case, those that come with attitudes, misperceptions, and preconceived notions about living life as a deaf person. Fortunately, as a young Jewish girl growing up in the suburbs of Chicago, I became well-versed in overcoming barriers thanks to my parents who never took no for an answer. For every door that people put in their way, they approached life with a combination of living generously, chesed, loving kindness, and a whole lot of chutzpah. <laughs> and thanks too to my dear friend and mentor, Henry Winkler. I met him when I was just 13, and he continued to inspire me well into adulthood, helping me to grow up in a manner that was respectful, empowering, and inclusive. It was because of their words of advice that I was able to overcome seemingly impossible odds and become the first deaf person and youngest woman to ever win an Academy Award for Best Actress. But just like any journey, there were bumps along the way, things that I had no control over. First, let me start with my public battle with misconceptions and attitudes about being deaf in Hollywood. On the morning after my Oscar win, when I should have been celebrating my achievement of receiving the film industry's highest honor, there in the trade papers was a review from columnist Rex Reed, whose comments about my win were the first that made me feel handicapped. What he said was that my win the night before was a pity vote. He thought that the role that I was playing, the character was deaf, somewhat obviously, he said, how can a deaf actress be able to play a role how, of a person who's deaf? How is that an accomplishment if there's no effort at all? Well, all I can say is thank goodness I had the support of my parents, my grandmother, who proudly held my Oscar, and Henry Winkler and his wife. Thanks to their support, I eventually learned to look past the prejudice and ignorance of people like Reed and prove them wrong. Thank you. Today, I'm celebrating 33 years as a working actor in the film and television industry. I'm 28 years old, so how's that math possible? No. <laughs> As for my very private battle, well, that was something that I've only chosen to speak about because silence is never the answer. As I've said for a few years, I fought a very private battle with domestic violence. Unfortunately, it took place in a very public setting with my co-star who would play my love interest in the film, Children of a Lesser God, and who was also my boyfriend. Suffice it to say, it was a very harrowing experience for me, and sometimes my screaming got so loud that I wondered why the neighbors didn't hear, didn't call, didn't even knock on the door to ask what was wrong. Probably one of the most glaring examples of the abuse I suffered took place on Oscar night, right there in a limo, after the incredible high of achieving Hollywood's highest honor. It ended with a pronouncement from him. You know, a lot of people have worked a long time to get what you got, your first film. 
What makes you think you deserved it? I don't know if that was my bottom, but I do know that shortly thereafter, I simply left. And now, in retrospect, I know for sure that it would not have been possible without the strength and the desire to overcome barriers, lessons that I learned from my parents and mentors like Henry Winkler. And it was no coincidence that the desire to prove the naysayers wrong, to show the world the last thing I would ever do is live in a world of silence, came from people who embraced Jewish values. It is those values that desire to stand up and never let the world push us aside ever again that helped me be the person I am today. Thank you. Thank you.